Mr. Palmer, you told police that you saw a suspicious looking man outside of the apartment building when you left that evening. Is he here in court? The man in the red tie. I ask that the record reflect that the witness identified the defendant. No further questions. Mr. Caruso? In Reading Jail by Reading Town, there is a pit of shame. And in it lies a wretched man, eaten by teeth of flame. In a burning winding sheet he lies, and his grave has got no name. And there, till Christ call forth the dead, in silence let him lie. No need to waste the foolish tear or heave the windy sigh. The man had killed the thing he loved, and so he had to die. Do you recognize that, Mr. Palmer? No, I don't. It's called The Ballad of Reading Jail by Oscar Wilde. It was the subject of a lecture you said you attended the night of your wife's murder. You see, they changed the program that night. And the professor who was supposed to lecture on Lord Byron took ill. There was a last minute substitution. But you couldn't know that, could you, Mr. Palmer, because you weren't there? Of course I was. I, I just forgot about the poem. Where's this going, Your Honor? I'll be there shortly. Proceed. Mr. Palmer, when is the first time you met the defendant, Mr. Ramirez? The first time I saw him was outside my building. Are you sure? Are you sure you didn't first see him in a place called Dooley's Bar? Are you sure you didn't get him drunk and convince him to rob your apartment, which you told him would be empty? Why would I rob my own apartment? Your wife had a bad habit of buying expensive jewelry, which you needed to support your bad habit, cocaine. Mr. Palmer is not on trial here, Your Honor. Your Honor, my client is on trial for his life. And I must request a full exploration of the facts so that I may demonstrate his innocence. Overruled. Isn't it true, Mr. Palmer, that you set your door alarm so that when Mr. Ramirez came into the apartment, he would be caught there, along with the body of your murdered wife, which you had left in the bathroom? Your Honor. Your wife was in the bathroom applying, I think they call them acrylic nails. But when the police found her body, three of those nails were not attached to her fingers. Well, the police had their killer, so they didn't bother to look, but I did. And I found them on the bathroom floor. Defense exhibit G. And do you know what I think, Mr. Palmer? I think you came up behind her, and when you were strangling the last bit of breath from her body, she reached back and scratched at her attacker and broke off those three acrylic nails. Do you always wear Turnbull and Asser? Excuse me? Your shirt. Sometimes. Will you show the court your neck? Show the court, Mr. Palmer. The other side, please. But all men kill the thing they love. By all, let this be heard. Some do it with a bitter look, some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss, the brave man with a sword. And now, Mr. Palmer, will you not finally tell us the truth? Move for a dismissal. The people concur. Case dismissed. Take the witness into custody. All rise. Congratulations. Did you know Ramirez was innocent when you took the case? From the moment I laid eyes on him. You can read mine, too, Anthony. Do you want me to read yours? So what's next? <laughs> Well, oh, Milano, Firenze, Napoli, tutte le belle cose d'Italia, Michelangelo. Will you excuse me? I see a friend. Dee! So nice to see you. I think I caught you at the wrong time. No, no, no. It's never the wrong time for you. How are you, my dear? 
David needs your help. Are you free for dinner? Yes. Let's go. Why didn't David tell me he was facing bankruptcy? He didn't want to admit he had made bad investments. Yeah, he knew I'd jump right down his throat. Mm -hmm. What about his work? The last I heard, David was in Paris photographing Dior's collection for Vogue. That was five years ago, Anthony. David hasn't worked since. I'm afraid his style is thought of as passe. Elegance and beauty are now passe. Huh? Requiescat in pacem. I will never accept it. You sound like David. But he's had an idea that could turn things around for him. So he sent you to get me so I can help him pull off this brainstorm, whatever it is. He wants to reunite the models he made famous in the 70s and 80s. Abby, Jane, Shelley, and Nina for one fabulous session. He's not talking about photography, Anthony. He's talking about art. Contemporary art. Warhol's Marilyn times five. He's including me, too. What do you think? I think David has lost his mind. Let me iterate the obvious. David's ex-models are also David's ex-wives. I'm the fellow who negotiated all four divorces. And if memory serves, Jane, Shelley, Nina, and Abby are not exactly fond of Mr. David Morrison at this point in history. But they like you, Anthony. You were as kind to them as you've been to me. They'll do it for you. I admire you, Dee. I really do. There's no other woman in the world who would want her husband reunited with his ex-wives, no matter how important, whatever the reason. I love David. I believe in his love for me, his talent, and this project. Well, David is an artist. The Modern Art Museum is funding this, Anthony. Eventually, these photographs will become part of a major exhibit. What model wouldn't want to be a part of this project? Are you and David still in Denver? Yes, we are. Well, I have an old friend there who has an office. Maybe I can make arrangements to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. OK, listen, you carry the salad. We are about to experience linguine alla caruso. Avanti, cara. Hello, Anthony. How nice to hear from you. Yeah, I suppose I could come. You want me to fly out Wednesday, October 3rd? Anthony, why do you want to see me? Ah, oh, you know, Mr. Powell is some dynamo, running his company and his oh. banks and making all the plans for your wedding. And now I hear he's thinking of politics. How do you keep up with him? Spencer thrives on activity. That's why he's so successful. Oh. Uh, Miss Marlowe, it's a Mr. Caruso. Oh. Anthony. <laughs> How delightful. How are you? You want me to go where? Hello. Anthony? Yeah? Oh, sure. Sure, I'll come. Anthony, can you loan me some money, please? Come on, this is taking forever. Uh, just a sec, babe. We're going for perfect. Perfect? I am perfect. This won't be my 14th elegance. Oh, cover. you're great. You're great, babe. Uh, could you take just one step closer? Excuse me. What is this? I'm sorry, Nina. It's from America. It better be Hillary, or at least Bill. It's Mr. Anthony Caruso. <sighs> Anthony? How are you? Morning, Della. Morning, Ken. You never told me you had 20 admirers. 
Oh, they're all from Anthony Caruso. The Anthony Caruso? Mm-hmm. Oh, wonderful man. What's he doing sending you flowers? Well, he's going to be using the office while Perry's in Washington. Oh, I can't wait to meet him. What's he like? <laughs> like that. You are lovelier every time I see you. Anthony Caruso, you'll <laughs> never change, no. thank God. <laughs> good to see you. It's good to see you. This has got to be Ken Molansky. Perry's told me a lot about you. It's a pleasure to meet you. The pleasure's mine. You've tried some very impressive cases, sir. Well, thank you. You call me Anthony, all right? Listen, when the ladies get here, and this is quite a group, which is in them right now. Okay. <laughs> Whoever would have thought we'd all be meeting like this? What is this anyway? The David Morrison ex-wives club? Maybe this is Anthony's idea of a joke. Ah. Is that the designer grunge look, Shelley, or did you find that outfit in a dumpster? I hear you're marrying an old fat man with money. What else can she do? Her exercise video bombed. Darling, I've heard Elegance fired you. Hardly. I made them fire the director. Hey, did they have videos back in your day? So funny, Abby. Us. All of us. Bitching away at one another. Meow. The last time I saw you, you went for my throat. You mean when I caught you in bed with David? Well, you couldn't hold on to him. Neither could you. Can't fight. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. Mr. Caruso is waiting for you. Okay, you've all come a long way, and I want to get right to the point. I want to explain what David has in mind. Before you do, Anthony, I want you to know that I'm here because you're a dear friend, not because I have any interest in what David wants. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you for that, all of you. But I also think you're going to like David's idea. I doubt it. So what does he want, Anthony? David wants all of you to join him at a photographic retrospective funded by and exhibited at the American Museum of Modern Art. Well, if David wants me to do this, it's gonna cost him. I mean, Anthony, even you have to admit, David treated us like something he'd scrape off his shoe. As you may have guessed, David is broke. And no one knows better than I how difficult a man he is. He's been my friend and client for 20 years. I don't want any part of this. I'm going to ask you to consider something, all right? Think back when David was the number one guy in the fashion industry. He took each one of you from obscurity and made you famous. So the money, the success, the glamour, the fame is all due to David. David's a louse. Far be it from me to talk you out of your feelings, but on the other hand, who but David could offer you the opportunity to be in the American Museum of Modern Art? Immortal. <laughs> Anthony, you fox. You're saying David is going to immortalize us. All right. I'm going to take a chance here. I'm going to go out on a limb. If you won't do it for David, Will you do it for me? We're all experts on David's marriages. It's a club you can't quit. I just want to get this over with.
I'm really very grateful to all of you for doing this. And so is David. It means a lot to him. Oh, don't thank us. Thank Anthony Caruso. Ah, uh, David seems to be running a little late. Which is the we speak? That's what you look like. A luscious assortment of extraordinarily beautiful ladies. Hello, darling. Hello, Shelley. You're still angry with me. And all of you as beautiful as ever. Or will be again when I get through with you. Would you kindly take these beautiful ladies to the dressing room? Okay? And I will be with you. I'm just going to prepare the shoot. I love you. Where have you been? I asked you to get David back here on time. Look, I did my best, all right? I'm sorry. David does what he wants. Listen, part of your job is to keep David on schedule. I don't hear David complaining. Like to follow me? Keep an eye on her, darling. Beautiful. Like God, Gorgeous. Love it. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Just like, just like that. Peace not doing that, okay? Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, my God, the memories this brings back. Will you stop doing that, please? Beautiful. I love it. Here, there we go. Can I move a little bit more to the left over there? Married to all of you. Will you please stop doing that? You're supposed to shoot pictures of me working. Not getting in my way, all right? I'm sorry, Mr. Morrison. Did you say you study photography? Yes. And pay attention. Will you tell those idiots across the hall to turn down the music? Now, please. I'm sorry, girls. Here we go. Oh, forget it. My hip's killing me. I'm hungry. Is anybody else hungry? David, we need a break. And uh, I need a break. OK. Take a break for now. Come back at 9 o'clock. And no desserts. Hey. Yes, my sweetheart. How are we doing? We're doing very well. Why did you join them? I'm feeling awkward around them. But don't feel awkward around them. Just think of them as relatives. Okay? I got work to do, sweetheart. Make them feel at home, please. Puzzled look. You're having an affair with Margot. I am not. The innocent voice. Margot made it obvious. Well, then she's lying. He's lying. Where's she now? I threw her out. Come, ladies. Unless you want to watch a replay of your own divorce. Wait a minute. We haven't finished working yet. Tomorrow, darling. Have a nice night, you two. I told you. Good night, sweetheart. What the hell did she say or do to I'll tell you room? what she did. She was coming out of the dark room, buttoning up her blouse. Well, for your information, she wasn't in the dark room with me, all right? I think what happened is she's tried to get even with me. Because I'd have got angry with her before. She deliberately did this to upset you. Am I supposed to believe this? Sweetheart, I never touched her. I never would. I love you. Don't you know that? I thought so. It's confused Abby and D, Shelley. what happened between them and me has nothing to do with us. Nothing. But I should have known they would poison the air. I 
tell you what I'm going to do. I'll scrap this entire project because I'll not have this ruin our marriage. Do you mean that? Of course I mean that. Don't you know how much I adore you? How much I absolutely love you? Come here. David. Yes, my darling. I won't let you call off this project. It's important to me, too. My darling, it's not important to me if it comes between you and me. It won't. It won't. Are you sure? Positive. You're so adorable. You're very tired, though. I want you to go home and rest. I have some things to do in the dark room still, and I'll be right home. Okay? I love you more. Excuse me. I'm Lieutenant Brock. May I ask who you are? Dee Morrison. David Morrison's wife? Yes. Well, Mrs. Morrison, I'm afraid I have some very bad news for you, ma'am. David. Yes, ma'am. Your husband was killed earlier this evening. Oh, my God. What? What happened? He was stabbed to death, ma'am. I know the name, I know the name. Are you holding Dee Morrison? And charging her with murder. I have an eyewitness, no, check that. I have several eyewitnesses who say she and Mr. Morrison had a real free-for-all. I got another eyewitness who saw her leaving the studio at 10 p.m., not at 9. And my men found her blood-stained dress in the trunk of her car along with the murder weapon. Is she a client of yours? She is not. Anthony, I didn't kill David. I believe you, Dee. Did you argue with David in front of witnesses? Yes. And what a thrill it was for those four, believe me. Probably went somewhere to drink champagne out of each other's shoes. But before I came home, David and I made up. I swear. What is it that you argued with him about? 
David's new assistant, Margo. The little tramp pretended David was having an affair with her. Was he? No. He said Margo was a liar, and I believe him. He said he loved me. He did love me, Anthony. With all his heart. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Morrison, time to go. Promise me you won't worry. Promise me. I'm sure the judge is going to set a reasonable bail. Right. Lieutenant, you take good care of her, huh? It's just a little something. I wanted to thank you both. You're welcome. Thanks for the tickets. They're supposed to be on the 50-yard line. I hope they are. <laughs> so, uh, it seems that David's ex-wives are becoming friends. Now that David isn't here to fight over. Either one of them or David's assistant, Margot, must have killed David. Let's think about what happened. The ex-wives were there. When Dee confronted Margot, Margot got upset and ran out. Then the ex-wives saw Dee argue with David. Any one of them could have set her up. We know something about the ex-wives, but so far, Margot's a mystery. Why wasn't she at the funeral? And was there anything really going on between Margot and David? Interesting questions. Dee, will you tell Della everything you can think of about the ex-wives? With pleasure. Ken. I know. Find Margot. You're ahead of me. I don't know about that. Wait a second. Or can I just forget this whole thing, please? Look, I'm a lawyer. My name is Ken Molansky. I'm investigating the murder of David Morrison. Oh, what does that have to do with me? Are you Margot Rentel? I don't blonde's my sister. I'm Deborah. Uh, oh! Ow! What you for? Look what you did to my car. and four separate limousines. And champagne. Yeah. And buy out the restaurant. Huh? And a gift. Yeah, but it's not like him to be late. Working overtime to save D, no doubt. That dip? You know, the way she killed David was really lame. You know, <laughs> when I caught David cheating, I was going to send him a bottle of poison champagne. 
But I didn't know anything about poison. <laughs> Waiter, what kind of poison goes well with champagne? <laughs> now, when I caught David, I was going to shoot him. But then I figured, hey, I'm too young and beautiful to spend my life in jail. I thought that I would kill him. And then I would say, I thought he was a burglar. But he left me before I could do it. I thought simple death was way too good for David. I wanted to gaslight him into suicide. <laughs> <laughs> My dear ladies. Oh, there you are. I hate to interrupt your homicidal fantasies, which I have enjoyed to the utmost, but lunch oh. is served. Oh, great. Ah. Oh. We have a veal piccata, which is, as you know, sautéed in lemon and butter. Bravo. <laughs> piccata. And then we have a specialty of mine, broccoli di rapi alla caruso, which is sautéed in olive oil and garlic, once again with the same garnish. I hope you enjoy it very much. Mm, bravo, bravo. Thank you. Uh, why don't you open your presents? I must tell you that Dee did not kill David, but it's possible that one of you did. This is a subpoena. And what does this mean, Anthony? It means you can't leave town until after the hearing. I love you all. Bon appétit. Au revoir. What? So I, um, I started singing country in some clubs in uh, Wyoming, near Casper. That's my hometown. Folks, they've got sort of a Dolly Parton sound. Yeah. Now I'm just saving up for a body to match. <laughs> well, good luck. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Here, this is for the headlight. This is the least I can do. Now, about Margo. She's a bimbo. I drive all the way from Casper. As soon as I get here, she's she's walking out the door. She says she's got a job in another town. Did she say where? All she told me was I shouldn't make any long distance phone calls. You know if she took a plane, train, or a bus? <laughs> Look, for all I know, she hiked her skirt and she hit. When will she be back? You just you just don't get it, do you, Milansky? <laughs> okay, look, ever since I stole Margot's boyfriend, she doesn't exactly tell me anything. I'm stuffed. <clears throat> well, it's been a trip. See ya. Can I get a check, please? Hey, wait a second. There you go. Where are you? Outside Margot's apartment. She was a blonde, right, Della? Yes, slim, about 115 pounds, dark eyes. Well, I don't think she's a blonde anymore. What do you mean? Well, I met with a young woman who claims to be Margot's sister. She says Margot left town. But get this, she matches the description you gave me, except she has brown hair, and I just found a blonde wig inside Margot's apartment. I'll be in touch.
Jane. Anthony, what are you doing here? Well, I'm going through David's papers to help prepare for Dee's defense. What are you doing here? Oh, I left my watch, Cartier, an engagement present from my fiance. Hmm. That's the kind of present I like the best. Sentimental <laughs> and expensive. Why'd you take it off? It was snagging my stockings, huh? the diamonds. If I lost it, Spencer would be very upset. He's got political aspirations, doesn't he? He plans to run for the Senate. And like Caesar's wife, Spencer Powell's wife must be above reproach. That's why I can understand why you so desperately want those photos back. What are you talking about, Anthony? When you first met David, he convinced you to pose nude. Didn't you tell him that returning the photos was your price for doing the session with the other wives? That's absurd. No, it's not absurd. It's the truth. You know that. And I know that. How do you know this? I found them. I also found the notes on your conversations with David. David kept a file on me. On almost everyone, not you alone. He was documenting every moment of his life. I think he was going to write his memoirs. <sighs> that rat. I want the pictures and the notes. I'd like to accommodate you, but I'm afraid I can't. Why, I thought you liked me. No, no, I adore you. You know, back when you were handling the divorce, I even thought that someday, maybe, you and I could... Oh, uh, be still my heart. The fact that that thought even crossed your mind is a memory I'll treasure forever. The photos must remain with the estate, as must the notes on the conversations, but I will do everything in my power to see that no one ever sees them. This is a nightmare. I know. As soon as this is over, I'm going home to get married. And you must invite me to the wedding, because there's nothing I like better than dancing at someone else's wedding. Well, Betsy, I'm Ken Moffat. You've heard of me. You're absolutely right. I'm that rambling guy from radio station KCDM, and I am here to tell you that if the numbers on your driver's license add up to an even number, you win $25. You are the rambling guy? Uh, my purse is in the back. Don't go away. That's okay. Consolation prize is $20. Oh, my God. This is great. This is great. <laughs> Do you want to go out? Sorry, can't. Got to ramble. Um, well, I'm here every day, 9 to 5. <laughs> That's great. David told me I could have these photographs. Did he mention it to you? Oh, no, but, Ina, your word is good enough for me. Oh, hey, look at this. David took this of me in Hong Kong for Versace. <laughs> very pretty, very colorful. What does it feel like to be that perfect? <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Before you came here, when was the last time you saw David? Divorce court. Has anybody ever told you that when you lie, your eyes widen? Why, did David tell you I called him? In a manner of speaking. He kept a journal, and in the journal it tells how many times you called begging him to take you back. You know, of all the ex-wives, you're the one who really loved David, truly loved him, and never got over him. No, oh, no, you're wrong there, because I've never met a man I didn't get over. Except David. What if when you came here and you saw David with Dee, you realized it was hopeless? How angry would that make you feel? You don't know how I feel. Oh, but I can guess. I think it would have made you more than angry. I think it would have made you enraged that for all your wealth and beauty and all your love for David, that you were a woman scorned. And your great love for David would have turned into a hatred so deep that you'd rather see him dead 
than happy with another woman. Just tell me I'm wrong. I don't want any. I'm not selling anything. Name's Melansky. I'm a lawyer. I'm looking for Deborah. Yeah? So am I. She took off with my car. Nice. When she brings it back, if she brings it back, I'm gonna give that little girl as much grief as she's given me. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, look, can I use your phone? I'll pay for the call. Okay. Thanks. There's the phone. Hello, Perry Mason's office. Still, it's Ken. Now, where are you? Really, who'd have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought what? Of all the courtrooms in all the world, she had to walk into mine. Ken, you're up to something. Always. Do I have any messages? No. No kidding. When'd she call? Ken, are you all right? Yeah, no problem. I'll send her roses, Della. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Just ought to handle it. Hope you get your car back. Me too. You don't look happy to see me. Why don't you stay right there? Uh-uh. I'll shoot. I don't think so. Maybe she will and maybe she won't. But I'm sure it's about that. Hey, can we talk about this? Get it. Give me a second, will you? Put your hands up, feller, and turn around. Don't know what you told those tow truck guys, but you don't live here. Now, wait a minute. My name's Ken Molansky. You're breaking and entering. I'm calling the cops. I'm a lawyer. I'm looking for Cutter. I didn't break anything. The door was wide open. It sounds like Cutter. Man goes off and parties with his deadbeat friends all night and then leaves his door wide open. I guess he's not a good neighbor, huh? Well, his property's a mess. His parties are too loud. He's a terrible neighbor. Do you know where I can find him? He in trouble? I'd say so. Good. He works at Red's boarding stable over in Golden. 
Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony, what a surprise. Come in. I'll put those over here, please. Yes, ma'am. We got two suits, dress, and this hot little number. That's it. Thank you. What are you waiting for? I told the boutique to charge this stuff to my room. Thank you, sir. Don't you love hotels, Anthony? I mean, you can get anything you want. You can get clothes. You can get perfume and real jewelry. Most people would be satisfied with magazines and toothpaste. Yeah, well, when David was alive, all I got was grief. And now that he's dead, he treats me so much better. Shelley, David promised to pay the expenses of his models while you were all here for the shoot. And the estate will continue to pay until after the hearing, but only for legitimate expenses. And what do you consider illegitimate expenses? This, the bracelet, that case of scotch over there. Well, I had to order booze. I, mean, I drank the whole minibar, and David left orders. They shouldn't restock it. Well, he did you a favor. Or do you want to drink? I don't want to drink. What has happened to you? What have you done to yourself? The police have picked you up for D&D? &D? Petty theft? <laughs> Possession? My God, even prostitution to help pay for your habit. What has happened to you? Yeah, well, it was all David's fault, you know. He was my pusher. He turned me on. He gave me everything that I wanted. And then he dropped me for Nina. Don't con me. This isn't about David. It's about you. You hated David. Yeah, well, he could have helped me when I was in trouble. He could have hired a lawyer. And he hung me out to dry instead. He didn't even return my phone calls. You're lying, Shelley. What are you talking about? In the past two years alone, you called David at least a half a dozen times, demanding money That's and threatening lie. his life. Did David say that? You know, he was a sick, sick man. He kept notes on the conversations. I saw them with my own eyes. You said you would dance on his grave. I didn't mean that. I was just talking No, you were just out of control. You were drunk, capable of maybe even murder. Do you have friends, Shelley? No. You don't have friends. You have pips, and you have pushers, and guys you take home at night without even asking their names. But they use I you, and you use them. I this conversation. I want you to leave. I leave. But first, you're going to meet somebody I want you to meet. Right on time. Hello, Anthony. Dr. Cooper, this is Shelley Morrison. Anthony, nice to meet you, Miss Morrison. What is this all about? Dr. Cooper runs the drug and alcohol rehab facility here in Denver. After the hearing, if you're not arrested for David's murder, you're going to spend 30 I days in prison. will facility. not! Then I'm going to call your probation officer and tell him you haven't been clean and sober. So it's either rehab or it's prison. This is not fair. It is. Be good to yourself. And I'll see you in court. barn you got here? Hell, want to buy it? <laughs> Not today. I'm looking for a guy named Dan Cutter. I hear he hangs around up here. Hell, I 86 that Yahoo two weeks ago. Can't have a conversation that doesn't end in a fight. Know where I can find him? Don't know and don't care. You a cop? Lawyer. No kidding. Listen, uh, this stable would make a good investment. Wouldn't sell it, but uh, I've got to retire. Got a bad ticker. <laughs> well, I'll think about it. Thanks a lot. Hey, lawyer. Guy in the back named J.D. Big fellow, red shirt and mustache. Maybe he can help you. Thanks a lot. 
50. Fifty and I'll see you. Oh, damn. <laughs> Your name JD? Yeah. My name's Melansky. I'm looking for Dan Cutter. You a cop? No, I'm a lawyer. Just want to ask him a few questions. You know where I can find him? For two hundred dollars, I might. You go to the Wild Horse Roadhouse off of I-91. Tell the guy behind the bar that J.D. sent you. Is he gonna be there? Should be. Anthony, Della told me I'd find you here. How are you, Abby? Won't you have a seat? Thank you. Well, is there something I can do for you? Yes. Loan me a copy of the museum's mailing list. I want to send out brochures of my work. That's a terrific idea. Thank you. So your career is going well? Very well. My paintings are selling great. I was Southwestern Artist of the Year last year. Then why did I get the idea that you were still angry at David for breaking his promise to buy you an art gallery? Anthony. David broke promise to all his wives. Why should I be different? But you were different. You accepted a reduced divorce settlement in return for David's verbal promise to set you up in business. And then when he reneged on that later, you felt swindled. How would you feel? I don't know. I only know that if I were your lawyer, I would have advised you to get that promise in writing. Lawyer I hired told me I didn't have a case. And that made you even more angry. So angry that you wrote him this letter threatening to kill him for what he had done to you. Anthony. That was a long time ago. I've moved on since then. I have a life now as an artist. I wish that were so. But despite the very good front you put up, your career has never materialized. How can you say that? I'm not trying to be cruel, Abby. I'm really not. But your paintings have never sold. You've never won any awards. In fact, for the past several years, you've been supporting yourself by painting murals on people's living room walls. Who told you that? That doesn't matter. Well, so what? A lot of artists wait for years for their work to be recognized. My success is a matter of time. I hope so. But wouldn't your life be easier now if David had kept his promise? If I was going to kill David, I would have done it when he divorced me. Oh, no, not necessarily. Your rage against David didn't start until after he broke his promise. Can I have that list, please? Absolutely. Good luck. Thank you, Anthony. Nice day, huh? Where'll it be? JD sent me. That so? What's on your mind? Does anyone know where I can find Dan Cutter? You a friend of Dan's? You might say that. Any friend of Dan's must be as crooked as he is. When you see that lousy SOB, you tell him we want our money. Hey, wait. No, you wait, buddy. You brought a message from JD? We got a message for Dan! <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> Buy you a beer, partner. And I want to drink it. Where'd you learn to ride bull like that? Law school. <laughs> Why don't you deal him out? You know something? I like your friends a hell of a lot better than I like you, JD. Now, where's Cutter? Hey! Now, let go of me. You're going to tell me. I ain't gonna tell you nothing for nothing. How much? Five hundred dollars. What? And for another five hundred, I'll take you to him. 
First you lied to me, now I'm supposed to hand you over a thousand bucks? If you want to find Cutter. He's mean, Milansky. He's back up in them hills. Now you go after him alone, you're gonna get yourself lost. You're gonna get snake bit, and Cutter's gonna find you and he's gonna kill you. And you're gonna keep all that from happening? Yep. Think it over. 200 now, 800 when I have Cutter. Six now, four later. Five now, five later. After the next hand. Game's over, cowboy. Come on, let's go. Lieutenant Brock, mm -hmm. you conducted the investigation into the death of David Morrison? Yes, I did, sir. I show you this antique dagger, People's Exhibit Number 3, and ask if you recognize it. <laughs> yes, it has my mark on it. We've already heard testimony that this dagger was used to kill David Morrison. When did you first see this weapon? We found it in the trunk of D. Morrison's car. And whose blood was on that dress? Well, it was blood type O, the same as the victim's. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're quite welcome, sir. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. You may step down, Lieutenant. his car. Yep. Joe, this is Ken. Ken, this is Joe. Joe, sorry, we can't help you. We're booked all the way through November. Well, I'm not on vacation. I'm looking for Dan Cutter. You missed him. Where'd he go? Up into the Medicine Bow Mountains. He and that girlfriend, Deborah, hunting elk. You know it's black powder season. I met Deborah. When will they be back? I don't know. Depends when they kill their elk. Could be a couple weeks. I can't wait a couple of weeks. Well, I know the medicine bow and I can track. I'll take you to him. How much? 1500 plus expenses. Forget it. Fine. I got a poker game. You know anyone that can track me to Dan Cutter? Nope. One thousand, no expenses. You ever been on a horse? Yeah. But you've never been in the medicine bow. So what? One thousand, no expenses. Man can't live without food. Two hundred for expenses, and that's it. Done. Got yourself a deal. Why don't you run over there and say hello to your transportation? <laughs> Mr. Jones, am I correct in saying that you are a member of the rock music band called uh, Motivation? Yeah, lead guitarist. I write songs, too. And how long has your band been playing together? Uh, two, three years. We uh, play gigs around town. Nothing big yet, but, you know, it'll happen. I'm sure it will. How long has your band been rehearsing in the studio across from the studio of the late David Morrison? Same time, two, three years. Mm -hmm. And were you rehearsing the night that David Morrison was killed? Yeah, two new songs I wrote. Do you happen to remember what time you finished rehearsal? Yeah, 10 o'clock exactly. Why exactly? Because according to our rental agreement, we had to stop playing at 10. Was this always the case? No, we used to uh, jam half the night, but Somebody complained. When you say somebody, you mean David Morrison? Well, yeah, yeah. All right. Mr. Jones, can you tell us what you saw the night that David Morrison was killed? At 10 o'clock, I came out of the studio. I lit a cigarette, and I looked up, and I saw Dee Morrison heading for the elevator. What angle did you see her at? Was it the front, side, the back? The back. Then how did you know it was she? Easy. For, you know, two, three years, I've been seeing her go in and out of her husband's studio. And on that particular night, how was the lighting in the hallway? Same as always. I could see all right. And the woman you identify as Dee Morrison, how was she dressed? <laughs> to kill. 
Oh, I mean, so I mean, um, she had the red dress, the uh, red hat, the red shoes with the heels. It was dynamite. The dress she was wearing, could you describe that for us? I don't know, um, silk, neck up to here, uh, long sleeves, short skirt. All right, I want to see if I've got this straight. She was wearing a long sleeve dress with a high neck and a hat. Was it a big hat? Mm -hmm. And a big hat. And she was walking away from you. Please forgive me, Mr. Jones. But how could you possibly know it was Dee Morrison? I could tell by her legs. By her legs? Dee Morrison has great legs, man. I mean, I know legs. I, uh, I study legs. I love legs. And uh, Dee Morrison's are the best. I told that to her husband once. He agreed. I'd know Dee Morrison's legs anywhere. That's interesting. Dee Morrison told me exactly the same thing. Mr. Jones, a connoisseur of legs like yourself should have the chance to prove it. Don't you think so? Yeah, sure. Your Honor, since the eyewitness testimony that this witness has given could put my client in jail for the rest of her life, it is imperative that there be no mistake. To guarantee that, I have prepared a small demonstration. With your permission? Your Honor, I object. Mr. Caruso is well known for his use of courtroom theatrics. Oh, Your Honor. Proceed, Mr. Caruso. Thank you. Lift that curtain about one third. And stop. Oh, what is this, a peep show? I object, Your Honor. Your Honor, Mr. Markham has already agreed to a lineup. The form should not be an issue, it seems to me. The court has already given its permission for this demonstration, Mr. Markham. Mr. Caruso, continue. Thank you. All right. Mr. Jones, since you have based your identification of Dee Morrison on her legs, it seems to me that you should be able to tell the court which pair of legs belong to Dee Morrison, should you not? Those are a lot of legs, man. Come, 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 Mr. Jones. You have said that you could identify those legs anywhere. So which pair of legs belongs to Dee Morrison? Second pair from the left. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Do you want to take some more time? Would you like to step down and get closer? No, man. I've admired those legs every day for the past two years. Second pair from the left, right there. Thank you very much, Mr. Jones. Raise the curtain all the way. Ladies, will you please turn around? As you can see, Dee Morrison was not behind that curtain. She went out that door and then came back in through that door while you were studying our volunteers' legs. Thank you, ladies, very much. Your Honor, I have no more questions for this witness. I have no questions. Much farther. I don't know. Here looks like good as place as any. Why don't we just make camp? Great. You okay? Oh, great. I thought you might be a little sore or something, but uh, I guess not, huh? Never felt better. You know Cutter very well. Yeah, he's a good buddy of mine. Does he feel the same way about you? Yep. If you're such good friends, why are you leading me to him? Well, you're paying me. Yeah, if Cutter paid you more money, you'd probably shoot me and leave me up here. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have to shoot you. I'd just ride off and leave you. You don't know where you are where you been or where you going. <laughs> well, you just starved to death. Are you threatening to leave me up here? Right now, I'm fixing to get some sleep. I asked you a question. Answer me. 
I'm fixing to get some sleep. You ought to do the same thing. I'm not tired. I paid you a thousand bucks, and you were supposed to take me to cut her. You saying I broke my word? <laughs> well, you weren't there when I got up this morning. You questioning my honor? Oh, knock it off, J.D. You wouldn't know honor if it asked you to dance. Now, where the hell were you? Round us up some breakfast. <laughs> Where'd you think you was going, riding off trail the wrong way like that? I didn't know there was a trail. You wouldn't know it if you'd seen it. That's why I hired you. And to find Dan Cutter. And while you've been busy trying to hang on to that horse, I've been tracking Cutter. Is it going to cost me another thousand before I find him? You a cynical man, Molansky. Now, Cutter and his girlfriend, Deborah, they's camped about three miles up the canyon on Gold Creek. So why don't you just get your horse and follow me? Hold on a second, J.D. Oh, 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 oh. It's okay. It's okay. Good boy. All right. Here, here we go. What was your relationship with David Morrison? I was the first of his many wives. And you were divorced from David Morrison? David divorced me. Yet you agreed to participate in his latest photographic project. Yes, you telephoned me and I came to Denver. So I did, and so you did. Did you agree because you were still in love with David Morrison? <laughs> Hardly. I participated because this project was to be exhibited in the American Museum of Modern Art. And as an artist, frankly, it was a connection that could be very useful to me. I see. Now, you mentioned the telephone call that I made to you when you were in Santa Fe. Do you happen to remember the date of that call? Yes, it was September 12th. I remember because I completed a very important painting that day. September 12th uh, was approximately three weeks before David's project was scheduled to begin. Yes. Right. Now, what did you do in those three weeks uh, between the time I called you in Santa Fe and you and the other ex-wives met with me in my office? What did I do? Hmm. I was painting in Santa Fe. I see. Before this trip, when was the last time you were in Denver? I haven't been to Denver since my divorce. Thank you very much, Ms. Morrison. I reserve the right to recall this witness, Your Honor. Mr. Markham? I have no questions. Ms. Taylor, you work for an airline called Fly West Airlines, yes? That's correct. And what is your job with this company? I'm a reservations clerk. Now, according to your company records in the past several months, did a Ms. Abby Morrison make a reservation to fly from Santa Fe to Denver? Yes, she did. And on what date did she actually fly? On September 14th. That is two days after I called her. And uh, her return flight, uh, what date was that? On October 1st. And that is two days before I met with all the other ex Ms. Morrisons. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. You've been very helpful. Mr. Todd, you are the landlord at 1400 Morton Street. That's the Ed Brooke Lofts. Yes, sir. 
And did you rent an apartment to Ms. Abby Morrison? Sure did. Do you happen to remember the dates of that rental agreement? She rented from September 14th through October 1st. Did she happen to tell you why she wanted the apartment? She said she was an artist and needed a place to work. Oh, well, didn't that disturb you that she was going to use the apartment as an art studio? No, I told her that if she got paint on the walls or on the floor, she'd have to pay to get it off herself. And did she get any paint on the walls, the floors, or anywhere else? No, I kept checking. By the way, after making this big deal out of being an artist, I never did see any paint in the apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, what about art materials, things like easels, paints, charcoal, uh, finished paintings, things of that sort? No, small. I didn't see any of that. Thank you very much. Been very helpful. No further questions? No questions, Your Honor. Recall Abby Morrison. Ms. Morrison, you have just told us that you were not in Denver earlier this month. Would you now care to change that testimony? All right. I was here. Why did you lie? Because my reason for being here is embarrassing. I'm intrigued. You don't appear to be a person easily embarrassed. I wanted David to help me take my paintings to the museum. Oh, so you came here especially to see David Morrison? Yes, but when I got here, I didn't have the guts to ask him for his help. But you rented an apartment across from his. Why did you do that? I don't know if you can understand this. I wanted to watch him. I wanted to see what he had become. And that's all I did. I just watched him. I never approached him. Mm -hmm. So you went back to Santa Fe, and you used the ticket that my office supplied for you to come back to Denver around the same time that the other wives were arriving. Yes. Ms. Morrison, your Denver landlord has testified that there were no art supplies, no easels, no paintings whatsoever in the Denver apartment. If you were not bringing paintings to Denver, what is it that you expected to show the museum? Artists don't travel with paintings, especially if they're big paintings. We travel with slides. That's what I brought. Ms. Morrison, where were you at the time of David Morrison's murder? I was at the Beekman Hotel, asleep. When you left David Morrison's studio, were you alone? No. I left the studio with the other wives. We went back to the hotel. Then I went to sleep. Do you recognize this woman? No, I don't think so. Ms. Wilson is a maid at the Beekman Hotel. She is prepared to testify that you didn't sleep in your bed that night. I am not on trial here. Your Honor. Ms. Morrison, where were you at the time of David Morrison's murder? Where were you, Ms. Morrison? I spent the night with a friend. May we know the name of this friend? I can't tell you that. Why not? You don't remember? You're unwilling? Why can't we hear the name? He's married. And I love him. And if I were to expose our affair, it would ruin his marriage. It would ruin his life. What is his name? I can't tell you that. Your Honor, will you please tell the witness where this is going? Miss Morrison, you must answer the question or be held in contempt. No. Miss Morrison, this court holds you in contempt. Perhaps after a night in jail, you'll be ready to answer the question. Bailiff? must be out hunting. Look around, see if you can pick up Cutter's trail. I'm gonna talk to Deborah. Okay. Hello, Deborah. Or should I say Margo? You had no business following me here. David Morrison was murdered, and you're involved. That makes you my business. I had nothing to do with David's murder. Then why'd you pretend to be someone else? So I call myself Margo instead of Deborah. So what? I might just call myself something else tomorrow. The blonde wig, the makeup? It's called changing your look, Polanski. All right? Models do it all the time. It's fun. I should try it. Why'd you run? 
Look, Morrison is dead. I lost my job. Why shouldn't I go camping with my boyfriend? Why don't you just get out of here? You know better than that. You're a witness to a murder. Now go pack your things. You're coming with me. I'm not going anywhere with you. But you have no choice. Charged with obstructing justice, she's coming back with me. I don't think so. You've only got one shot. for the lady. <laughs> Jenny was a pretty girl, Lord only knows, along, along, along the Colorado Trail. You know what Denver is? Denver is really nice. Oh, it's beautiful. We love it. All right, back to work. Mm -hmm. Abby Morrison, spending the night in jail. <laughs> Anthony, do you think she's really telling the truth about protecting her lover? Not a chance. That's a big baloney story, believe me. Stella, where are the police photographs? <clears throat> Right here. What took you so long? <laughs> well, well, well. What do you see? It's what I don't see, Della. Here, look at this. What? See this? Anthony, this is the lady you wanted to meet. And I could use some cash. Come in. Ms. Morrison. I am sure your night in jail is not an experience you want to repeat. So please, make it easy on yourself. Tell us where you were and who you were with at the time of David Morrison's murder. I refuse to answer that question. In that case, Ms. Morrison, the bailiff will return you to jail. Your Honor, if you please, I would like to go past that question so that Ms. Morrison may continue her testimony. The court finds the witness in contempt. But you may continue, Mr. Caruso. Thank you, Your Honor. There is a young woman in this court. I'm asking her to stand. 
Miss Morrison, do you recognize this woman? Yes, she's Margot, David's assistant. When did you meet her? On the first day of shooting. Did you know her before? No. No further questions, Your Honor. I reserve the right to recall this witness. Mr. Markham? No questions, Your Honor. Will you please state your name? Uh, Deborah Walters. Not Margot Rentel? No. And where are you from? Santa Fe, New Mexico. Who are your parents? David Morrison. And Abby Walters Morrison. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Markham? No questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Walters. You may step down. I am recalling Abby Morrison. Ms. Morrison, why did you lie about your relationship with Ms. Walters? My relationship between my daughter and myself is nobody's business but ours. Did David Morrison know he had a daughter? I told him, yes. After your divorce? Yes. And did he believe he had a child? No! He went so far as to accuse me of lying to get him back. Isn't it true that at the time of your divorce, you hated David so much that you never even told him you were pregnant? In other words, it was as if, if I can't have you, you can't have your child. No, that is not true. Did you tell Deborah that David Morrison was her father? Yes, I did. Did you tell Deborah that David Morrison knew he had a daughter, but wasn't interested, didn't care, didn't care if he saw her or spoke to her or anything? I was trying to protect her. David was too selfish to be a father. He would have broken her heart. Two weeks before David was killed, Deborah showed up at David's studio, presented herself as a photographic assistant, and volunteered to work without salary. Was that your idea? Yes, it was. Why the charade? David had cheated me before, and I didn't want him to have the opportunity to do it again. Sweetheart. And I thought if she was working in David's studio, she would have access to his files and his papers, and we would know if he was really bankrupt or if he was trying to cheat me again. In other words, you sent your daughter to spy on her father. You could call it that. I want to show you something. I'm going to show you a photograph marked Defense Exhibit G. Can you identify it, please? It's David and I on our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. As you can see, David is wearing a silver and turquoise pendant around his neck. Do you recognize it? It's a nausea. It's a Navajo talisman for good luck and prosperity. My grandmother gave it to me, and I gave it to David on our wedding day. The day that David was murdered, your daughter took pictures of you and the other ex-wives at the photographic session, did she not? Yes. David wanted a record of his genius at work. All right. This is one of the pictures that she actually took at the session. Uh, it's uh, Defense Exhibit K, Your Honor. Now, what is David wearing around his neck? The nausea. And David was wearing the nausea the night he was killed. I now show you this photograph, which is People's Exhibit 6. It's a police photograph taken right after David's murder. Do you notice anything unusual about this picture? No. The nausea is missing, and the broken chain is lying next to him on the floor. I don't see anything significant about that. Oh. I think you do. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Markham? I have no questions, Your Honor. We call Deborah Walters, please. Deborah, you staged a scene in the studio that night to give Dee Morrison the impression that you were having an affair with her husband. Why did you do that? <laughs> he was a jerk. He deserved whatever grief I could give him. You hated your father that much. After what he did to me, why wouldn't I hate him? Deborah, do you recognize this Nadja that David Morrison is wearing around his neck? 
Yes, it belonged to my great-grandmother. And you know about Navajo legends and culture? I grew up listening to stories about them, yes. So this Naja has great personal meaning for you? Yes. Which is why you took it back after you murdered David Morris. <laughs> what are you talking about? Deborah, you're wearing a chain around your neck. The end of it is hidden. I want you to show the court what is at the end of that chain. Leave her alone. She Bailiff. hasn't done anything. Miss Morrison, please, please, leave Ms. Her Morrison alone. please sit down. You'll be ejected from the courtroom and taken to jail. Show the, the court. court what is at the end of that chain. I don't have to do that. Ms. Walters, please show this court what is at the end of that chain. Isn't it true that your mother realized what you were going to do and she raced from her hotel room to try to stop you? I called her and I told her I was going to kill him. She begged me not to. She said she was going to come right up. But she was too late. You had already murdered your father. Yes. But I am not sorry. Because he never left. That's what you told me, Mom. He, <laughs> he never loved me. Your Honor, in view of this evidence, I ask you to set aside the charges against my client, Dean Morrison. Mr. Markham, the people agree? Mom. The charges against Dean Morrison are dismissed. Bailiff, me. please take Miss Walters into custody. This court is adjourned. He loved all of them, but he never loved me. Rise. <laughs> Ken, Stella, really wonderful work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Anthony. Thank you. D, I have an idea. Wait, don't you want to congratulate her? It's first? my idea. Wait, one at a time. Okay, here it is. We're going to take the negatives from David Shute and produce the exhibit ourselves. And then do a poster, maybe even a book. What do you think? Well, it would certainly help pay off my debts. Great. Terrific. Oh, Anthony, can you handle the legal work? Pro, Pro bono. bono. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. D, let's do lunch. Wonderful. Bye-bye, right. <laughs> honey. See you Talk later. Bye. <laughs> uh, oh, David's entrepreneurial spirit lives on. Indeed it does. I think he would really have liked that. This has been an emotional and difficult case. So I'm going to reward us all if with the most wonderful, unforgettable meal if you'll take me to the nearest kitchen you can find. Huh? Oh, no. Not until you sing the song that you sang the first time you came into the office. Oh, that was not just a song. You know what that was? No. That was the first act aria that Alfredo sings to Mimi in La Boheme. Oh, it speaks of love. It speaks of hope. <laughs>